Hi, it's Francesco. In today's video, we will check how you can sessionize your events using Apache Flink. Sessionizing events means grouping events together, for example, for a certain user, if they appear within a specific time frame. So in the case that you see here, basically we have two users trying to click on our website, and we want to group events belonging to kind of the same time frame. In order to do so, Apache Flink offers the option to create session windows. With session windows, we open a window every time we see the first event appearing, and then we'll leave the window open until for a certain amount of time, we don't see any other events happening. Like in our case, for example, for user one, we start the first window, and then we find the second event within user one, and then we leave the window open until for a certain session gap, we don't find any new events coming. If we check for user two, we open the window, but then within the gap, we see a second event arriving. So we leave the window open and we include the second and the third event. And then since after the third event, there is no events happening, we close the session. The same again for user one, where we include four events in total, and for user two, where we have only one event. That's about enough for the theory. Let's check how we can create sessions with Ivan for Apache Flink. So what we can see here is that we have a Kafka instance and a Flink instance. Kafka is where our data, our click stream, in this case, it will be CPU readings, will reside. And then Flink will be able, will give us the ability to generate sessions. So let's check the data in Kafka. What we see in the topics is a CPU load topic. If we browse the message of the CPU load topic, we can fetch them and we will see that it, will con it contains a set of fields, including hostname, CPU, usage, and Occuridat. Occuridat is the Linux timestamp. So what we can do now is to go to Flink Demo, go to Application, create an application called Sessions. Let's create the application, and then we create the Flink, the first version. If application and version doesn't mean anything to you, check out the URL below because it points you to a video explaining our new developer experience with Ivan for Apache Flink. In an application, we need to define where we take the data from, where we want to push the data, and then the transformation SQL. Let's start by defining the source of the data, and we point to our Kafka instance. And the source of the data is defined as follows. We are defining a table called CPU in with hostname, CPU, usage, and Occuridat, all fields that we saw in the uh, topic before. And then what we do is we create a new uh, column called timeltz, which is translating the Linux timestamp into a Flink timestamp with the to timestamp ltz function. If we scroll down, we are also able to run a preview and to check that our table definition matches the data in our table. So in this case, we did everything right. So we have hostname dupi, CPU2, Usage 84.59, Occuridat is the Linux timestamp, and LTZ is the translation of the Linux timestamp in Flink timestamp. We will use this Flink timestamp in order to create the sessions. So click on our table. Next, we need to define the sync. And for the sake of this exercise, we will sync the data back to Kafka. So wait, let me add the first sync table, and let me select Kafka demo as integration. So we are syncing our data back to Kafka. In the create statement part, what we are saying is basically that we insert into our target table CPU out ag, and we select a set of columns. Hostname, CPU, and average usage were coming from the uh, Kafka topic. And then we add session start, taking the time LTZ and defining session of 10 seconds, session end, the same from our CPU in, that is a table defined on top of the Kafka topic, and we group by hostname, CPU, and the session function to create session windows. We can now run 
and this will create a little Flink SQL that will check if our table definition, our SQL statement definition is correct. This will pass and create those 10 seconds session windows for us. So in our case, we can see that Bashful CPU1 had a session going from 8.39.48 until 8.40.28. So it's longer than 10 seconds because multiple events happen in the same window and that an usage average of 84.9. We can now save and deploy later. We can create a deployment that will take our Flink application into usage and will start pushing back the data to Kafka. So we deploy without a save point. This will start the Flink job. It's in running state now. Now we can go back to Kafka and check that we have a new topic called CPU Ag Starts Sessions. If we browse the topic and fetch the messages, we should see all the information about the sessions. But checking in our web UI is a little bit complicated, so we can go to the terminal and on the left side, we have the application creating the dataset. On the right side, we can use KCAT, a tool to browse Kafka topics. So we check as consumer the topic CPU ag stats session, the same topic that we were browsing in the web UI. And what we should see here is the sessions that we created. For example, if we stick to this one, we see that the sleepy CPU one created a session between 10.22.12 and 10.22.22, so a single 10-second session with just one event, and the usage average was 74.72%. To summarize, what we saw here is a way to sessionize events using Flink SQL. We used the Flink session function in order to create windows that were starting as soon as we were having the first event for a specific key, and then lasting until we saw events within the window lag. So in our case, if we saw events within 10 seconds, we were extending the window to wait for another 10 seconds, 10 seconds. This is a very interesting way of sessionizing events, understanding behaviors of users, specifically if you have an interactive UI where you want to understand how your user interact and play with your tool. I hope you enjoy today's video. If you want to know more about Flink windowing, check the URL below because it contains a video explaining all the three types of windows. If you enjoyed this video, like the video and subscribe to the YouTube channel. Hope to see you soon. Bye from Francesco.